Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we are going to study about one of the most commonly synthesized rubbers, also known as polyurethane rubber or isocyanide rubber. Now why the name polyurethane or isocyanide is because the monomers used are such. Over here we are also going to study about the exact reaction of the two monomers which will lead to the polymerization. Polyurethane rubber, isocyanide rubber. Polyurethane rubber is produced by reacting polyalcohols with diisocyanide. Now let me actually explain you what is polyalcohols. First we'll study what polyalcohols are and then we'll move on to the next reactant or the next monomer that is isocyanide. Polyalcohols, poly means many and alcohols means the OH group. So over here I'll have my alkane chain and to that alkane chain I'll have many OH attached to it. That means polyalcohol. Now when I say polyalcohol it should be two or more than two alcoholic groups. Over here we have taken the simplest of them known as glycol. Glycol is a common name and what does glycol mean? Two carbons and on both the carbons I'll have OH groups attached to it. So this is my ethylene glycol, ethylene, ethylene means ethane, ethane has two carbons, ethyl group has two carbons and when I say ethylene glycol that means two carbons and on both the carbons I have OH groups attached to it. So this is C which has an OH group attached to it, another C which has an OH group attached to it and the other valencies over here are fulfilled by my hydrogens. This is my polyalcohol with diisocyanate. Now diisocyanide, for studying diisocyanide let us first understand what is cyanide group. Cyanide group is my CN group. When a carbon is attached to a nitrogen it is known as cyanate. When I say isocyanate, isocyanate is my NC group wherein an N is attached to a C. Of course there are many theories which will say that CN is equals to NC. Why? Because there is C double bond N which is cyanate and N double bond C which is isocyanate. So why do we have to name them differently because cyanates and isocyanates are common groups or common names of the groups and they are not IUPAC names and that is the reason why over here we are using isocyanate. Whenever you write isocyanate you first write nitrogen and after that you write a carbon. This is diisocyanate. In chemistry di is 2 tries 3, tetra is 4 and that is the reason why over here in my monomer 2 or in my reactant 2 I will have 2 cyanide groups over here. Over here I have ethylene diisocyanide. Ethylene means ethane and ethane is nothing but 2 carbons. Now these 2 carbons C and C when 2 C's are attached to each other they are known as ethane. So over here CH2 twice that means 1 carbon and that is twice that means ethylene. Over here I have diisocyanide. Di means 2 and two isocyanate groups. What are my isocyanate groups? Isocyanates are my NC groups. NC groups over here are NC and NC over here. Diisocyanates. Now when my ethylene glycol reacts with my diisocyanate, what exactly happens? Let me first tell you what happens and then we'll see it in the product side. This hydrogen over here and this hydrogen over here detaches itself. So from my ethylene glycol, I won't have this hydrogen and I won't have this hydrogen. If I do not have both these hydrogens, what will happen to my first monomer over here? This O will get a valency and over here this O will also get a valency. In my ethylene glycol, both the O's are getting 1-1 one, one valency because from both the O's, 1-1 one, one hydrogens are taken away and if both the O's are getting 1-1 one, one valency, they will attach themselves to something or the other. If this hydrogen is going away, where will it attach itself? What happens to my monomer 2 is this double bond breaks off. Because of this double bond breaks off, this carbon has also got one valency, this carbon has also got one valency when the double bond breaks between them. When a double bond breaks over here, this carbon which has one valency will get attached to this entire ethylene glycol. This ethylene glycol attaches itself to this carbon. But when this double bond breaks, nitrogen will also get one one valency each. So if carbon gets one valency and it gets attached to this entire ethylene glycol, over here also this carbon will get one valency which will get attached to this entire ethylene glycol. What will happen to this one valency which that nitrogen will get? Do you remember over here hydrogens were detaching themselves and because of the hydrogens detaching themselves they will go and they will attach themselves to this nitrogen. This hydrogen will go and attach itself to this nitrogen. 
So what is happening over here? The hydrogens are getting attached to the nitrogens and whatever the valency of carbon was there was getting attached to this entire ethylene glycol. And let us understand this on the product side. Over here we have ethylene glycol C, C, I have C, C, this entire H is are like that. So this entire thing is getting repeated over here. Over here what was happening? I had an OH but this H got detached and that's the reason why I have just O over here with a valency. In the same way over here also I had OH, this H got detached. So over here also I got O with one valency. Now what happened to this? This got attached to ethylene diisocyanate. So this is entire ethylene diisocyanate. But over here C double bond N double bond O. Instead of double bond N what is happening? C has a single bond with N. As I told you this double bond breaks off. And if it has a single bond with N the double bond will O will remain as it is. If it has a single bond with N this gets one valency and because of this valency it got attached to this entire compound over here that was ethylene glycon. And this nitrogen also got one valency and because of that one valency this hydrogen got attached to this nitrogen over here. So this becomes NH. Similar thing happened over here, CH2 twice, this NH, C double bond O and so on. Now this entire product which I have got by addition of ethylene glycol with ethylene diisocyanate is known as my polyurethane rubber. This entire structure is my polyurethane rubber. Now why did I use the term addition over here? Because over here there is addition of two monomers happening. This is one monomer ethylene glycol. This is another monomer ethylene diisocyanate. When this adds up with this and there is no byproduct forming, that reaction is known as my addition reaction. This entire addition of two monomers has led to the polymerization of polyurethane rubber. Now let us see the properties and the uses of this rubber. The first property is polyurethanes are highly resistant to oxidation because of the saturated character. The polyurethane structure as we saw it, the structure itself has oxygen in it with C double bond O. And the structure is so complex there is no space for anything else to come and combine or anything else to come and react with it. Especially oxygen. And that's the reason why oxidation will not take place. Now what do I mean by oxidation? Oxidation is addition of oxygen oxygen or combination of oxygen. When a reactant combines itself with oxygen, it is known as oxidation. And that's the reason why over here oxidation won't take place because it already has oxygen in its double bond. The second is they also show good resistance to many organic solvents but are attacked by acids alkalis especially concentrated and hot. So whenever I will have extremely concentrated and extremely hot either an acid or an alkali this will get decomposed. But apart from that if I have another organic solvents for example I have other aldehydes, ketones, esters or ethers something like that it will not react or get decomposed by them. The last is the polyurethane foams are light, tough and resistant to heat abrasion, chemicals and weathering. Let us see the uses of it. The one and the most important use of it is for surface coatings and manufactures of foams and fibers. Now why do we have it for manufactures of foams and fibers? Because polyurethane foams are light, tough and resistant to heat and abrasion. So we are in this video we studied what exactly is polyurethane rubber. We studied the reactants which form it the actual reaction which leads to the polymerization of it, its properties and uses. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.